So I've got a pod point to install today and this one is a customer move. So this is one we're all going to start facing more often. People move houses, take the stuff with them and we've got uh, this to install. This was apparently outside. Um, we're not putting it outside because I don't believe it's an IP rated consumer unit. Um, we're going to stick it inside just as a point of double pole isolation for the pod point. We've got a CT clamp. The install we've got to work with here. So it's TNCS, there's an old Economy 7, if I zoom out a little bit, it's no longer connected, so that's not an issue. We've got the Hager 16th edition board up here. So we're going to jump onto the non-RCD side, feed the little secondary consumer unit um, with our double pole RCD in. And then the pod point is wired through this wall. And we're going to stick it just on this pillar here. Um, yeah, we're going to get on with that now. Nathan's pleased with himself because as you'll see, he's just stuck that hole in. And what did you say that you did that Matthew can't do? Didn't smash the letter brick off like Matthew does. There you go. Yeah, that is a lot better than Matthew produces. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so Matthew's just making sure the pod points in working order. We've got it over here. Obviously, it looks like it's been in for a bit of time. So he's just checking it over, make sure we're all hunky-dory and we'll um, start getting it on the wall and jump back on in the video in a little bit. So we've got a pod point solar and Matthew's just going to get it onto the wall. Now we've just been checking it out to make sure it is reusable, it seems to be. Um, it's got the pen fault detection built into the charger itself, so we're okay there. Let's just checking the dates on it to make sure that that was the case. Um, we've got an enclosure here with the appropriate RCD on, so we're going to have Gert getting this mounted up inside as well. Okay, so we've got the old, new pod point on the wall now. Matthew's just wired this up, so we've gone for the NYY cable, as you can see. And if you check on the manufacturer's spec of these, they all have a slightly different rating um, given in the manufacturer's instructions. This one's Elland. I think it's rated up to 55 amps in free air. Um, I'd have to check on the data sheet, but we're putting this on a 40 amp. Uh, MCB and I'll show you inside in a second the setup in there uh, but we've got the CTV clamp wired through and in uh, just going to give this a tidy up now Matthew and Nathan are just clearing up over here so you see we've got the customer supplied old but new consumer unit uh, with the C40 double pole type uh, BRCD in there and uh, yeah that's all been labelled up prior you can see Electric vehicle charging point is fitted with pod point pen isolation system, which is equivalent to the uh, regulation there as shown. And uh, that's, that's all sorted. And you can see up here now we've got this NYY cable again. We didn't necessarily have to use this in the garage, but decided to just for a bit of extra protection. And that's going to be glanded up into this board up there. And uh, we'll get on with that in a minute. I'll show you that in a second. Um, yeah, so we're about there. This is the, the day of the England and Germany game, so we're going to get some predictions, Nathan. What score is it going to be later, England, Germany? Mm. Let's say Germany are going to win. 2-1 and England will get the first to concede. England will concede well, first. England will concede first. Copy okay. Jose Mourinho's. Yeah, this is, this is what I heard on the radio. So you, you're just picking what the world's, one of the world's best managers have said. Good move. Matthew, what do you reckon? Uh, one all and then it'll go to extra time and England will win. Yeah, what was you asking earlier on the, if every game goes to extra time? No, I meant did it... Is it always penalties after extra time? Okay, it sounded like you thought that in every knockout oh, no, game they had I'm extra time. Stupid. Okay, fair enough. So Matthew's going for one all and penalties? Yeah? Or one all just and extra time. just then extra England time? England will win in the first half. Okay, I'm going to say it'll be three-one to England in the in the game, and the um, the winner has to buy breakfast next week. Uh, yeah, so we're getting with this. I'll jump back on with the video. Whoever got that football score right is going to buy breakfast for us all tomorrow or next week. So it's but the winner. Yeah, the winner. Oh, Germany's going to win. The winner. I didn't want to tell you that at the start of the bet because you would have just said something ridiculous. So yeah, whoever wins. Oh. Is, is buying the breakfast. Look at the horror in Nathan's Tried face. To You're gonna have to buy something. <laughs> Let's hope your betting's as good as your um, electrical work, Nathan. Haha. -ha. So yeah, we'll get on with that now. We've got the CT clamp through. We just need to get that on the tail. That's quite straightforward. 
uh, we'll, we'll jump up and hassle Matthew while he's wiring it into this board. You just need to get the customer's permission to turn that off. Nathan's itching to get this green thing fired up. I'll jump back on with the video in a bit. got the ear defenders on to protect yourself from Matthew's nonsense, Nathan. Yeah. He <laughs> what? He's been walking around there and he's done safety glasses, his sunglasses. Yeah. Sunglasses when it's not sunny. You can never be too careful though, can you, Nathan? Yeah. Is um, your jumper an official cleaning cloth? No. <laughs> So uh, Matthew's just attempting to connect in, well he's not attempting, he is connecting in the uh, EV supply with the MYY cable, you see we've landed in the side there, he's just um, wrestling it in. It is a thick solid car conductor so it's a little bit more difficult to work with. Uh, what's the board like up there Matthew, is it alright? Not too bad. Not too bad? Uh, Nathan would do it better obviously. Well it goes without saying, Nathan is like the superstar spark. Easy this game isn't it Nathan? Yeah. Yeah. So we're um, getting this B40 connected. Is it a B40? I'm saying it is. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got B40 going in on the non-RCD protected side, and then we're dropping down in the MYY to the double pole RCD, which gives us that double pole isolation for if anyone's coming to work on the pod point, um, and it offers the protection the pod point may need as well. Uh, it's customer supplied equipment, and it's been used before, as we've said. But you know, it's all coming together okay for the minute. Not an especially challenging one, we're going to run through a test procedure on the charge point as well on this video, so we'll cover that next um, and I'll show you what Matthew produces with this, I'm sure it's going to look brilliant. You can see we come through the side there all glanded up and um, into the neutral bar into our B40 MCB, but we have noticed a couple of little gremlins in here, we've got this neutral that's a bit overstripped and Matthew spied the ring final circuit, it's a bit overheated look. So while we're in here, we're going to sort that out. It's never been connected up right in the top of the MCB. It was just floating around in there. So yeah, important when you're inside a consumer unit, just have a look across it, check all the terminations while you're in there having a look. It makes sense to do it. And um, we found this just by doing just that. So we can get it sorted out while we're here doing something unrelated, but it takes seconds, doesn't it? So we'll tidy it all up and I'll show you what it looks like once Matthew's works this magic. So Matthew's sorted out that neutral there, now you can see up on the top that's properly connected. Same with the ring final, he's given that a strip back to some good cable and re-terminated it. We've landed in and we've gone for the Linean fire clips on here, so it's just a nice neat finish. We still need to tidy up in this corner, so we're going to do that and then we'll get on with the testing and I will show you the test process on a Podpoint EV charger with our TIS kit and um, how we gather the results that we need when you're commissioning one of these. So we'll just put everything back together, have a clean up and we'll show you that in a sec. So we're giving it a relabel, it was missing its main switch and RCD label so we've gone across there and stuck the EV one on as well. So we'll run on with the testing now and uh, show you it when it's all finished up. Yeah. Right so we're going to run through the EV test sequence now, we've got it all set up I believe. So we can see here we're doing the continuity test first. If I hit go, and you can see we've measured 0 0.07, and we'll save that. Now I want to do the insulation resistance test, and we need to jump our leads around, and we can quickly do that. If I can remember the order we go in. And L1. All the dials are staying the same for the time being, so we're on A, N, C, and OK. Kind of takes you through it, so as long as you follow the instructions on screen, you can't really go wrong, although we very often do because it gets a little bit confusing. Um, but now it's doing the IR tests. If Nathan comes in a little bit closer, you can see the figures it's coming out with here. And hopefully we get a, a tick to say we're all good. So yeah, we can save that. It then gives us a lead and button position, which is actually the same as it was already. So we can just tick go. It's telling us here how it wants things to be positioned. We can save it. So now it's saying it wants CB to go into state B. So we twist that over. You can hear the test set move itself over. Um, everything else stays the same, I think. So we tick OK. 
Okay. Yeah, change that to 32 amps as Matthew just pointed out. So we can tick go and it should run through the test sequence. You can see it's happy with that again. So if we tick save, it now wants CP to go to position C. And we're still on 32 amp and fault position OK. So we press the tick button again. And it's taken another measurement and we can save that. It now wants fault to go to fault PE. And 32 amp and C. So we're in the right position again. If we tick the go button, you can see it's recorded an acceptable value there. We can click save. It wants to be CPC again, 32 amps and fault E. So you can hear the pod point flick over every time we make these adjustments. It's given us another reading. We can save. And now it wants to do a ZPE RA no trip. So we need our leads set up as follows. We're going B4 to N, which we are. We're going B3 to E and B1 to L1. We need PP set to 32 which it is, CP to C, and then fault position OK, and then hit the go button, and it's given us the measured voltage on the screen, if I hit it go down, it will start the test, so this is essentially the loop test through the EV charger, and we're on no trip, 6 milliamps, just got out of focus a bit there, so this one takes a bit of time. And you can see we've got an acceptable reading there. We've got the PSC and the ZLN and ZPE. So we can click save. It now wants to do the RCD type A test. And we've gone N to B4 again, which we are. Uh, B3 to E and B1 to L1. PP32, CP wants to be on C. And fault position OK. And hit test again. And that operated the uh, EV charge point in the required time. We can click save. Uh, RCD protection tripped correctly to resume. EV select position A, uh, which we've done. And that's reset the RCD, so we can tick that. And it now wants the leads set. And that way we need to be on 32 amps position C. And the state is OK. Hit the tick button and we can carry on with the test. And again, we're good to go. This up, got quite a lot of sunlight on the screen. So I'll try and come around this way. Hit save. And that's the end of the test sequence with a thumbs up. So happy days. We can save that there. Test results have been stored. And uh, yeah, that's that test point run through. You can see here, it is just a case of flinging the dials over. And as you do it, you can hear the pod point move its position around. It is a bit of a tricky one to get started with. I'm not going to lie, when we first started doing these, uh, it was a bit confusing as to what position you need your leads and how you need to run through the test sequence. But as soon as you get your head around it and you follow the instructions on the screen, it's not that bad. Um, and now we know that this test has been done and the pod point's been commissioned properly. Uh, you know, jobs are good. Enough. We've got the car charging now over to the pod point that Nathan's cleaned up. And you can see we've got our cable cleated up the side there, CT clamp wires all on and sorted, and the meter's spinning around at quite the rate of knots, so we know the vehicle's charging. And uh, yeah, we'll jump back and have a little chat about the install in a sec. Hope you enjoyed that video of us running through a pod point EV charge install. And that was a customer's pre-used model. They've moved house, brought it with them, with all of the equipment up front to that as well. And they were trying to keep costs to a minimum and reuse all of that. It all worked fine. We've, as you saw in the video, we tested through it. Obviously, the basic tests on the actual circuit feeding into it as well. And then the um, EV test with the TIS MFT Pro and the EV100 test adapter to make sure we're... Um, Checking that the charge point's working as it should as well. Critical part of the installation. Uh, we also spotted something that wasn't quite right on the um, existing consumer unit. So we've rectified that as well at the time of this work. And no charge of that for the customer. It's just something basic. It's always worth checking through a consumer unit when you're there doing some work. Um, you're in and about about it anyway. So why not was the chain of thought. And uh, yeah, Matthew spotted it, wanted to put it right.
We've actually got a load more work at that property to do. Uh, there's a garden, light, a garden lighting project, extra sockets throughout the house, there's a hot tub going in, there's a bar area. Uh, there's quite a lot of other stuff that's coming and um, you know that it's probably going to build on as these things do and hopefully we can get some of that on, on camera as well. And uh, yeah, we're going to go and watch the England game now. We'll see who comes up Trump's on that bet and uh, who's buying the dinner. The look of horror in the lads' faces when they realised that winning maybe wasn't such a great thing. And if I'd said that from the start, they would have both said 10-0 to Germany or something stupid. So yeah, we'll see how that comes up. We're, I've let them finish now. It's what time are we on? It's 2.40, so they can go and get themselves ready, get down the, the pub if that's where they're going and uh, watch the game and see what the actual result is. Best chance England have got for quite a long while, I think, speaking about the football, so we'll see if they see if they can do it and pull it off. It'd be nice to keep the tournament running a little bit and um, yeah, see how they progress. If you have any questions on this install, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as always. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that kind of closes it out. I tried to include as much of the testing as possible. It is a faff with all of the leads and the dials. You know, I like things to be simple and unfortunately, as much as the TIS kit does simplify it as far as possible with the instructions and swapping of all the leads and dials, it's still a, um, a faff with adjusting everything all of the time. You know, I much rather press a button, watch it go, and it gives all of the right results, but we're not quite there yet with the, the EV testing. And um, yeah, you've got to run through the right process and make sure you're handing over something that's compliant and safe to the customer. Uh, so yeah, that's what we've tried to do on this job. And um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, Matthew and Nathan are going to keep appearing on the channel as we progress and we'll try and get them chatting a bit more. I'm going to put Nathan in charge of the camera more often and see if we can't get him chatting and involved as well because I think it's a nice thing to do to include the point of view of an apprentice. So we've kind of got all the generations of electricians if you like now with an apprentice, someone freshly out of the time and an old git like me who's been knocking around for quite a while. So we've got quite a wide range of um, experience and different points of view and levels of understanding and while we joke that Nathan thinks it's really easy it is just a joke he appreciates that it's not and uh, yeah we'll, we'll keep building away with that I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I haven't mentioned in the video that I need to say I'd, I don't think so I think we've kind of covered it all off and we'll leave it there um, get involved in the comments obviously when this comes out the football match will have been played so you'll know who the winner of the, the competition was but if you want to congratulate them down below, please feel free to do so. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.